you had brought up about how you think that boys and girls can't be friends. And um, I had my mind changed on that because I was on the other side where I had mostly guy friends. Mm -hmm. And then Steve brought up a lot of great points and it made me change my mind. How did you come to that? Because I know that's what a lot of people wanted to hear about. Everybody, welcome back to Big Mood. Hi. We got a very special guest in the house, the one and only Stacy Diaz. Yay. So pretty. She is joining us for quite a few episodes today, so I'm very excited for you to see all of those. If you haven't watched the ones she's been in already, we love her. She's been part of the fam for a, a long time, yeah. basically since inception, like <laughs> one of our original guests, one yeah. of the OG inception. guests. Mm -hmm. Inception. <laughs> uh, who else we got? Uh, you got Gina here. Hi. Yeah, and Tiff. And Hola. we got Nikki. Uh, Jess is missing today. We kicked her out because there can only be one dog lady at a time. <laughs> there was a huge me. sale. There was a huge sale on mason jars, and you know, <laughs> she had to get there was a it. huge sale on live, laugh, love. <laughs> <laughs> Jess is like raging me at the camera right now. She's, she's like, changed, guys. She's from Texas, <laughs> and she's live, laugh, love now. Yeah, <laughs> um, but she actually she's is, like fuck y'all. <laughs> in her big old cowboy hat. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Jen. <laughs> While she's putting up a uh, fucking um, the one of the wood planks, oh, <laughs> God. the farmhouse thing with arrows everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We love you, Jess. She actually picked out this topic today that we're talking about. And I think Stacey's the perfect guest for this because um, you are empower women. And I do. You, you said you grew up around a lot of women, right? I did. Yeah. So do you want to tell them what we're yeah, going to talk so about? Yeah, so we're talking about... <laughs> <laughs> or do you want to just go? Do you want to do, 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 do your job? That's hard. Do you want to do your job? You need us then, right? Go ahead and talk about women. <laughs> we're talking about toxic femininity today, which yes. is a term, I guess, coined because um, toxic masculinity, masculinity has yeah. been around for a while as a, a talking point for a lot of feminists. And so uh, recently women are also like, wait, hey, there's a lot of toxic femininity, too, where like yeah. girls think you can only girl one way and they really harshly judge other women um, if you're not doing it correct, the correct way that all women yeah, should be toxic. doing it, which is super toxic. Um, is this the same thing as like pick me's? I no, this is like the opposite of pick me. Pick me's are like, I'm different because I'm not like them. Oh. These are the thems that are like, you're not one of us. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Yeah. And I uh, There's so many terms. Yeah. I know. There's a lot of terms. <laughs> I didn't grow up with a lot of women. So that's why I'm very curious on your experiences. And I have a little listicle that we're gonna touch on that just sent over. And maybe you can say like I mean, everybody, but like, I'm more specifically curious just yeah. as someone that's grown up around let's, a lot of women. Let's if, see what if you've experienced that? any of these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, the first one is uh, bagging on other women for womaning differently than they do. Some women will feel nothing about letting you know how you are parenting wrong by using X product or letting your child do Y particular thing. It becomes really toxic, especially after someone gives birth. Dude, oh. wait, can we touch it point by point? Yeah. Because you know what I was going to say about this? I haven't experienced it myself, but I think mothers get that a lot. Yeah. Or, or pregnant people, mm -hmm. because I feel like I, you obviously we all follow influencers who we love and we watch for a long time. And all of a sudden they'll become pregnant and then they'll be crying on their story because they're like, you guys are literally attacking me for eating like sushi. Yeah. And mm -hmm. my doctor said it was OK, you know, so. Yeah. That sounds horrible and scary, Terrible. you know. Yeah. But it's not even that's not exclusively reserved for just influencers because literally True. anyone like just in society especially like for me personally i had the i had to face the criticisms of oh you're just a little girl you're a teenager i was oh, i was 18 yeah. when isaac was born but i was 17 throughout my pregnancy uh -huh. and so they're just like oh you don't know what you're talking about or like i, I had no like I had no say over my own pregnancy or like how I wanted to raise my son or nothing because it's like, oh, you're just a little girl. Like you don't know mm. anything. So, so other women would treat you like that. Yeah, other women wow. would treat me like that. And even like my own doctors, like, yeah, it was. So I had to go through the teen mom shit and the typical like woman crap where it's like oh this is how i did it this is how you should do it see yeah. this is what um confuses me because i feel like women are all about body autonomy and like freeing yourself so that you are free to do what you want with your body but then they police other women's bodies and that's that's Dude, really weird you, you know yeah. what i think it is i i mean obviously we have the unique experience of having a bunch of people watching us when we're going through these things but i think it's a fact that 
women don't really ever get to tell you like let's say you would dye your hair red i'm never i've never done my hair red so i can't tell you how to do it right but because so many women have been pregnant mm -hmm. and different things work for them they feel like because it's your first time doing it they have a uh, right to tell you yeah, what to do or experience. how to do it or what you're doing wrong. And I've watched, like, I have some friends, um, who one just gave birth and one's currently pregnant right now. One's 21. The other one's 23. Their names are Blanca and Lulu. Shout out to them. If you guys are here because you watch them, but mm -hmm. they are influencers and they're really young. And some of the messages that they pose that people will tell them, like, Oh, that's why you shouldn't be having babies. You're too Ooh. young. This is a full no, grown geez. woman. Like she's 21 and 23. Like you don't ever get to say who gets to have a kid or not. Yeah. I don't like the, the judgment that like extremist judgment of just yeah. like this. It's black and white. And it's like, and I think it's the fact that maybe some of these toxic women have had one child or several children. So they think that they're, they experts. That they're experts. Everyone online is an expert. That's yeah. what I've mm -hmm. noticed about yeah. every single subject you ever bring up is that everyone in the comment section is an expert. I mean, I think especially on pregnancy because I don't ever really get it on anything else. You know, like obviously I work out, right? And there's been times where people tell me you're doing that wrong. And I'm like, girl, I'm not, but mm -hmm. you do what you want to do. Oh yeah, you working know? out, what your diet is. Like. Yeah, but see like those things, I guess, I don't really get, do you guys get them for other things? Hmm. Um, uh, for my language, yeah, they're like you know, real men or women should not cuss like that because oh, real yeah, men yeah. don't like it. Oh. Like, yeah, but see, I, I feel like I got that from guys too. So I grew up in um, you like, know, Catholic like yeah, Filipino yeah. house, and so like I naturally sit. I'm pigeon toed. I don't know if it has anything to do with this, but I just naturally sit with my legs open. Like mm. I just like mm. it's the most comfortable position for me, and p my elders would always scold me for like sitting with my legs open but the guys could sit with their legs open and i just didn't think that was fair it's not like i'm wearing a skirt i'm wearing jeans mm -hmm. like i just so, doesn't make sense to me is toxic femini femininity like um like well you shouldn't dress like that because it's not very yes. ladylike yeah, yeah. Not, oh, yeah. Oh, i see so it's very old school thinking yeah like oh. thinking that you should woman one particular way um i wonder if you're gonna get this though because this kind of happened while i was planning a wedding because i didn't know what i was doing at all like uh -huh. i said um and i was very vocal about how one i didn't know what i was doing and two i didn't really care that much about like doing it the right way i just yeah. wanted to have fun and like make the day like special with whoever was there and um but I've, I've seen a lot of women uh, talk about other women planning their weddings wrong or even in their own family. Like the mom will say that they should do do it a certain way and the bride doesn't even want to do it that way. But the mom or the other older females in the family mm. will try to control the wedding. Yeah, I had a girlfriend who just got married and she said that she had to deal with a lot of her family members, especially like the women in the family. Have, they were upset that my friend wanted a no children wedding. Mm. Oh, and yeah. and then I go to her wedding and there's a shit ton of kids. <laughs> like, <laughs> they were, even though she was just like no kids, like they still were like, fuck it, too. I'm bringing my kids. Yeah, I, I said no cool. kids and people didn't listen. <laughs> yeah, it's like it was fine, but I'm just like sure, but, whatever, it, but it's your day. You're the yeah. one paying yeah. for it. Like come for on, sure. But yeah, sorry, you were gonna say something. Um, no, I mean I haven't got it. I've gotten my mom who's like, why are you gonna get that or this or that? But I don't <laughs> think I think for this specific topic, it's more like you know when you go to the gym and then there's women that are like, why is she wearing all that makeup? She's at the gym. Mm -hmm. And it's like, bitch, it's her life. Let her live. She yeah. might have just gotten off work. Yeah. yeah. Like, or, or maybe she got ready to go to the gym. Yeah. Like, what That's is the problem? That's definitely toxic femininity, femininity mm -hmm. right? Because then, like, going back to the whole, like, pregnancy stuff and the parenting stuff, like, there is, I feel like, because I already have a kid, right? Like, I know I've been through this. I have friends that will get pregnant. I'm so excited for them. Yeah. I don't like I guess I can see how these women can get into the mentality of like I'm so excited for you I want you to learn from my mistakes oh. like this is what I did um and you know like this is your first time like go ahead and learn from me like yeah, that's there's a right way to do it yes. no yeah that's exactly what I was yes. gonna say yeah. that's Sorry. probably the intention behind it but the execution comes yes. on really condescending and patronizing yeah. and really like toxic so yeah. there's a way to say it and go about it and also respect the autonomy of that person yeah. and like exactly what they would want to do for themselves is just like oh here's a suggestion if you yeah. want it or don't even fucking say anything if you're like, not asked i don't know if this helps you but this helped me and then right. say like what yeah. personally helped you yeah and, yeah and then when it gets really really toxic is yeah it's the judgment of like oh you're doing that no wonder your kid is going through this or whatever yeah. it is it's like fuck off like yeah that's dude not that's, your business at all that's scary yeah. yeah i don't yeah it's weird though because i'm i'm trying to think of if it's just a female thing or not because i feel like a lot of 
comments in my comment section that are negative like that they're from guys and girls. I was going to say that too. Yeah. It actually comes a lot from guys Wait, too. Wait, about yeah. the pregnancy? Yes. Like pregnancy what? and child. And about oh. like just like, oh, no wonder, blah, blah, blah. Or like even like the single girls on the show on our comments, sometimes they'll be like, oh, no wonder they're single because they have too high standards or like whatever. Um, so Which yeah, it's interesting. Wise. That's weird. Yeah. I'm sorry you're settling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or you want other girls to settle for you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, wow. well, that just shows exactly where they see themselves. Yeah, that's sure. what I think. <laughs> it is. I think it's a, an insecurity of what the boy or girl is thinking about themselves is projected onto someone else. Because when you're talking about, oh, why is she wearing so much makeup at the gym? I remember my mom commenting about that before. Like, oh, I just can't handle how some girls have to get dressed up for the gym. But she heard it from her mom. And I think it was something that she was always conscious of. And then I think a lot of these things Projection. just get passed down and people don't right. question where their judgments or, are coming from or some women genuinely like to get ready and go to the gym and do what they're gonna do and some women don't but yeah. they wish that none of them did so they didn't have to step up to that standard mm -hmm. right like i don't wear makeup to the gym anymore i used to but there's i don't care what anybody else is doing yeah literally you know and i think that maybe sometimes people feel like oh shit she looks better. So maybe if I would put makeup on, like I'm going to look better too, mm. you know, but yeah. because I don't want to do the effort, I'm just going to talk bad about her. Yeah. There is a saying that I saw online. Uh, it said, uh, yeah, it's all about women empowerment. So you think she looks better than you. <laughs> and then that's when girls get mean, yeah. you know, because like, like if someone so. else are like, oh yes, queen, you look so great. If it's right. someone that's not like traditionally, um, attractive not even with in, this, in this western whatever they're like oh yes oh, yes yes you're so confident but then if it's someone that's hot that has like you know looks great doing whatever they're like oh she's wearing too much makeup she's doing yeah. blah, blah, blah. or she's superficial yeah or she's superficial. so obsessed with herself or mm -hmm. something like that yeah i've seen a lot of that that is mm -hmm. so true that's yeah because so even like not even just online <laughs> like yeah. there's literally people that will envy other people because they don't see themselves like they're yeah. not comfortable yeah. within mm -hmm. themselves so then they end up like lashing out with like su subtle, petty, like passive aggressive comments mm -hmm. or looks. It's just like, I got a comment saying, um, you're just mad because I have a wedding ring and you don't. And I'm just like, <gasps> yikes. Ew. Is that, so is that what you pride yourself in? Like, <laughs> is that all whole, you are? That's your yeah. identity? Your identity is having a ring on your finger from some wow. dude, you know? Yikes. Like that's, wow. doesn't affect yeah, me People, I think, project their own goals or level, like metrics of success on other people. Oh, you don't have a wedding ring yet. Like mm -hmm. you haven't made it as a woman. Like, mm -hmm. or no kids. You didn't have yeah. kids. That's, you're not yeah. fulfilling your duty as a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. But going back to what you said though, like how it's it's actually like a lot of the times I feel like that's true where a lot of this toxic mentality does get passed on from our parents that we don't even you don't think question about. It. Yeah, yeah, you don't question it. You're just like, oh, that's what they think. Oh, okay, I guess that's what I'm thinking too. Like you yeah. don't even really take the time to analyze like, wait, why do I have this judgment or like this this prejudice against other people for this one particular thing? And then not until you actually take a second, you're like, wait. Where is this coming from? Like, oh, yeah, like I heard my aunt or my grandma or whatever, like say this one particular thing. And then I adopted that as my own thought. And you have to question that shit. Like, wait, that makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, I, I did notice, I guess, because um, I'm trying to think of examples where like I've seen when you're talking about the oh, if you think she's more attractive than you, you get mad or whatever. Um, I, I did notice when I was younger in my 20s, I had a boyfriend. I've always been like monogamous like very like serious relationships back to back and so i've always been in a relationship but when i would go by myself to events and there would be like couples got, girls would get like really guarded with their man and i'm like i'm not trying to take your man girl like i don't need your yeah. but i like to talk to everybody like i talk to guys girls i talk to everyone the same but they see it as like you're flirting and they get like i wouldn't get invited to certain things right. it was so it was weird to me to be taken that way when I felt like I was treating everyone equally. Yeah, because mm -hmm. at that point, you don't realize that this is their own insecurity yeah. that they're projecting onto you. And I also mm -hmm. don't think of myself that way. Like, I don't think of myself as attractive. So, like, when I found out, like, oh, my girlfriend doesn't like me, or doesn't like you hanging around us or whatever, mm -hmm. I'm like, wait, why? I was really hurt mm -hmm. by it. But, yeah, that happened. Um, yeah. What's the second point? Okay, so going down the list. I know, I want to read them all. Yeah, right? There's, there's quite a few on here. There's um, there's a ton of shaming everywhere, especially online. Like you're you're not you're planning on not medicating. God, you're not getting a medal. You're uh, you're medicating. Wow, you're so weak. Like you're for not, birth? 
Oh. Like giving birth? Yeah. Uh, I guess so. Yeah. You're not breastfeeding. What? Are you abusing your child? Oh. You're breastfeeding. Do you spit on moms who can't? Jeez. You're going back to work. What's wrong with you? Don't you love your child? Oh my God. Yeah. This is about. Yeah. Here I we saw, go again with the mom literally, thing. I saw this thing that a woman said, if you had a C-section, you're not a real mom. Oh, that's the next one. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, say, say? so they say, uh, oh, sorry. if you had a C-section, you're not a real mom. Cause technically you didn't give birth. You just got the baby removed from you. Ooh, like how what? little what? Do, like how little do how you have dumb. in your life so you have to have you have to given the birth to yeah. be a mom yeah what about adopting moms right I have, like i just are they not real moms either like you're not a real mom like it's it's ridiculous it's like how little do you have to pride in your life that you have to latch onto something so crappy and shitty yeah that you have to shame other people for it yeah i've actually so i i have thoughts on that because I had Isaac through C-section mm. and my own personal goal, like I'm not judging other people for having a C-section. Like that's, it's fucking hard. You're still all that, right? Okay, I'm not gonna get into that. For me, for myself, I felt really sad and, and really like, I felt like a disappointment. I felt like I didn't fully really? get wow. birth. I, and these were like my own Thoughts? feelings about myself and my own experience like I was I had to have a c-section because Isaac was like upside down like mm -hmm. like the wrong position oh. so his head was up and it's supposed to be down yeah. to give birth naturally so it's called breach so he was breech, and I found out two days before he was born that he was breech. Mm. and I was, the day that he was born I went in to have a, a transversion I think that's what they call it but it's where they flip them around and like from the outside of the belly. Oh, what does that feel like? Well, that's the thing. They when I went in, it. I was already in labor oh. and they, they're supposed to give you medication to loosen the uterus and then you'll do it, whatever. The point is I was, I, I, I went to go get that procedure done because I really wanted to have a natural birth and yeah. I was so disappointed that I couldn't have that and I had to have a C-section. So for me and myself, I gave myself that judgment mm. of I didn't work for Isaac. Mm. I don't I didn't earn him. Like I oh. didn't feel like I was fully a mother. But why? I exactly like I don't know. I don't know. Like I really don't know Did why. Did your mom tell you that at some point? I don't think I've ever heard this from anyone. Well, I don't, did she give natural birth to all of you yeah, guys? She did. But, but, did she pride herself in that? Um, I don't I don't think so. Mm. Like I don't really know like where how from? I even got this judgment on myself. I think it was just, that's why I'm like emphasizing so much. Like this was my experience and this is how I felt afterwards. I felt like I just didn't earn him. Oh. And I would never put that judgment on other women. Yeah, on like mom. fuck no, especially after going through it myself. Like fuck yeah, I earned him. Like that surgery, my entire fucking organs were out. Like, yeah, no, Ugh. that was, that was that was a whole nother thing. I had to stay in the hospital for five days. And yeah, you had with, surgery. Yeah. And then like with vaginal birth, you stay like max two, maybe what? like maybe three. Yeah. But yeah, like you can leave right away. You're fine. You can't even like sit up because it's you're cutting into your abs. Yeah, I couldn't sit up. I couldn't even carry him very well. Like and then also like I, my milk came in. So my breasts were like so like oh rock hard. And like I was in so much pain and like I fucking earned him, but now I see that. But back then, especially with all the criticisms and all the the judgment of being, being a teen mom. mom, it's like oh fuck, like it's another I'm a thing. Teen on the mom, game. exactly. It's just like here's another reason why I'm I'm already starting off to be a, such a horrible mother because I'm already fucking young and I didn't earn him with vaginal delivery. Like it's just it's crazy how how like I I can't even tell you where that came from for myself. Yeah. But now looking back, I know I was wrong. And did anyone that. ever tell you that you took the easy way out that I would I told myself that. Oh, shit. I literally would tell myself that. And like, I feel bad for being so cruel to no, old, they did like, it young this, tip. Yeah. Like, she she yeah. fucking went through so well, much. Plus, you could have died if you tried to do it the natural yeah. way. There's a reason why they or the baby. baby yeah. died. Yeah. His cord was actually around his neck. Yeah. Too, and they took him out. Yeah. And I mean, I think at the end of the day, because all this judgment that women get from other women, um, I think this is giving birth naturally is painful. And the more pain you have, the more pride you have after you accomplish something, right? And for years and years and years has been done a certain way, but medicine is there to literally make, make our lives easier. Yeah. You know, it's the same baby. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, you traded it for another one, right. <laughs> a better model or a worse yeah. model. It's the same kid. And 
as it is hormone like uh, your hormones are already all over the place and so then to put this kind of pressure on women you know like with the whole breastfeeding thing like you have you guys heard about like moms who say like fed is best Mm -hmm. Do you guys know what that means? No. Yeah, that means like even formula, formula doesn't matter. Mama, you're feeding your baby. As long as you're feeding your baby, that's the best thing you can do, right? And at the end of the day, like that's all we can do. Like our lives are different. And those women that take so much pride, kind of like the ring girl, like, oh, you don't have a ring? Yeah, bitch, I don't. What's your problem? Yeah. Like, that doesn't make you a better or worse woman than, I, than me, right? Yeah, see, that's the part where it doesn't click for me, where I have those judgments and those goals for myself i breastfed isaac for an entire year because i'm like that's my goal i would love to do that for my baby like i get to actually experience that bonding with him and then try to give him as much nutri nutrition as i could so it was my it was a goal of mine but it, i'm not going to place that judgment on other women when they can't there's so many complications a lot of women can't even get to breastfeed or even even create that much breast milk mm -hmm. like they don't they can't even like fully feed their baby sometimes like there's so many factors in it or the women are just like oh that's just not for me I don't want to do that and that's fucking fine yeah but for me for myself I was like this is my goal I really want to accomplish this and if I wasn't able to breastfeed just like how I was I felt so down on myself for not giving birth naturally I know I would have been really hard on myself if I couldn't breastfeed yeah. either and there's women who like literally schedule their c-sections mm -hmm. like they're like i'm busy next week so let's have them this week oh my gosh oh, yeah and that's fine they're moms <laughs> yeah and they're practical moms and it's I mean we're in the modern world literally yeah and um before we jump more into that we are gonna hear a word from our sponsors which was recorded by us a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> candid are clear aligners thousands of people have used candid the clear comfortable removable and practically invisible aligners to help straighten their teeth and now they love their smile. Your treatment is prescribed and closely monitored remotely by the same licensed orthodontist from start to finish. Other companies use general dentists, but Candid works with actual orthodontists who are experts in tooth movement. You can book an appointment at a Candid studio near you or do everything from the comfort and convenience of your own home. The average Candid treatment is just six months and you see results way before then. And it also costs thousands less than traditional braces. Also, if you get the aligners, you get whitening for free. Where else can you get something as expensive as teeth whitening for free? Fra. Mm -hmm. Fra. 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 You get mm -hmm. it Fra. with Candid. Candid help you get straighter, brighter smile you've always wanted and probably need if you're dating. Right now, you can save $75 on Candid Starter Kit. Go to CandidCO.com slash mood and use code mood. That's CandidCO.com slash mood with the code mood. Take advantage of this limited time offer to save $75 on your starter kit. CandidCO.com slash mood and use our code mood. And mm -hmm. after you finish straightening and whitening your teeth, you're going to want to take care of those teeth. So grab yourself an electric toothbrush like Bruce. Bruce. <laughs> Going to the dentist can be a little bit scary, especially if you are anticipating some surprises. Uh oh, I didn't floss. I wasn't flossing. You uh -oh. need to floss uh -oh, I wasn't and you flossing. need to brush your teeth. Oh no, teeth. I wasn't brushing my teeth. And an electric toothbrush like Bruce can help you have no surprise is because they have so many different modes that take care of so many different parts of your mouth. You got, you know, you got different parts of your mouth, Do right? I, like you got tongue? gums. Oh, you got your your tongue. your tongue. Oh, your teeth. Oh, all all your tooths. What about the your roof teeth? of my mouth? Oh, you should probably brush that too. <laughs> okay, you're disgusting. Under okay. your tongue, your tonsils, <laughs> down your throat. If you're Gina, the uvula. Oh, oh no. <laughs> um, my my favorite feature of this is the tongue mode actually because you turn it over at the end of your toothbrush cycle and you put it on tongue mode and it just like it has this like bristly thing on like the back ridges. that like really scrubs out all that bacteria out of your tongue which is kind of I don't know if, or where I read this, but it's like it's what creates bad breath. Yeah, yeah. It's all you on need your to tongue. be brushing your tongue all the yep. time. Like don't skip brushing forms. your tongue. Should not be white. No, okay. Ew. It's gross. You should be hydrating and brushing that tongue. Uh, there's six unique modes to customize your brushing experience. It's ha it has a four week battery life with magnetic charging stand and a compact travel case, which is awesome because when you travel, it's like you don't want that to get filled with bacteria. So the travel case is. Perfect. So it's got a really sleek design. It's like matte black. I love it. It makes your counter look great. And you can get 15% off your Bruce toothbrush kit and refill plan when you use promo code mood at bruce.com. That's 15% off using promo code mood at B-R-U-U-S-H.com. Once again, go to bruce.com and use code mood for 15% off your Bruce toothbrush kit and refill plan. 
Okay, I hope you bought whatever we told you to buy. But and we are yeah. jumping back into some toxic femininity here. Oh, wait, before yes. you keep going, yeah, though, I did want to talk about the the medicated stuff for mm. for birth. Yes. So right now I'm pregnant, and yes. my goal is to eventually, for this delivery, to have a vaginal birth, just like how I wanted to have with Isaac, mm -hmm. and. I don't know if that's going to happen for me. Mm -hmm. And but this time I know to be kinder to myself. Like if I can't like that's just not in the cards for me. But that's my goal. It's also a goal of mine to try to go w unmedicated, too. But that's only because I know my body and I know myself and I know my mental strength. And I I haven't been through birth like that. I'm I'm not talking. I'm not like trying to say I know everything right. But what I'm saying is I know my body can handle a certain amount of pain. And so I it's a go personal goal of mine to try to get there. But I am not completely ruling out getting medicated if yeah. I need to. Like if I'm just like, holy shit, this is a lot more than I expected, which I probably will. I, it's not out of the question for me. Yeah. And it's also not something that I'm going to hold against any woman or like make make like the whole thing about like, oh, you got a medal. Like you're going to get a medal because yeah. you got you were unmedicated like fuck you dude like that's that's their goal that's their accomplishment if they see it as an accomplishment whatever it is it's like everyone gets to live or, their I own mean, there's also like there's a lot of risks involved with getting the the shot it's a big shot and they have to get it very specifically oh, in yeah, they the go nerves. On your spine. and so uh, my sister-in-law worked at a hospital and she said she had seen two people get paralyzed from it and so she wasn't when she was giving birth she wasn't gonna do the medicine because she was like no fuck that i don't want to risk that but then she said it was so painful she gave in and took the medicine and she called yeah. me all, like in her drunken stupor and she was like nikki when you have a kid just take the drugs just take yeah. the drugs that's oh, hilarious yes. <laughs> even my doctor too she was like i'm not gonna say anything like she even oh. she even made it clear like i'm not gonna judge you if you want the medication like, yeah i'm go for it. i'm not even pregnant <laughs> yeah. like the minute i walk into the hospital sedate me yeah. Yeah. Like, like, do what for any to, reason even if it's just yeah. an eye exam just, <laughs> <laughs> just sedate me <laughs> it's just funny because she was so like no, like absolutely not. We are not medicating, not judging anyone for doing it, but yeah. just like her own fear of like, I don't want any of those complications to happen. Yeah. Uh, and then she was, she called me and she was like, take the drugs. <laughs> take yeah. them. My aunt had yeah. to give birth to triplets and <gasps> oh my a God, whole, yeah, a whole half of her me. body was paralyzed for a little bit. Oh, dang. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, I had to do Three? the spinal tap because they for a C-section, they call it a spinal tap. Yeah. I don't know if things have changed, but back then it was different. <sighs> um, and yeah, like I remember when they stuck the needle in, like he hit a nerve or something. And so I kind of twitched. And he's like, you have to stay still. I'm like, this is your fault. You made me move. But yeah, so like, I don't know. For me, yeah. I'm fucking weird. I want to know what the pain feels like. I want to know like the, my the mom full did experience. That. Yeah, with the, with me and my sister, she says she wanted to f like feel everything. Yeah. I'm like, okay, mm. you do you. Like I, I also yeah. heard that her third was a C-section, my brother. Mm -hmm. Some people say that they choose natural birth because um, the medicine like makes it so numb that they it takes longer because they can't feel the pushing. The pushing, yeah. So the labor is longer. So then they choose like, oh, I'll be in pain so that way it'll get over faster yeah. it also First really time swelled me up too oh, i was really? like and yeah. in the photos with isaac being born i was like a balloon wow this oh. episode is the best birth control in the world know, right? <laughs> oh my god i'm gonna go home and crush all my birth control pills and snort them wow. oh my god. <laughs> okay oh. here's one that's not mother parenting related Let's um okay so this one says oh guys do this too to some extent but um being shamed for natural functions uh women are more likely i feel to be judged or to judge body hair wrinkles mm, gray yeah. hairs etc um yeah, the beauty standards do you see that do you find that to be true yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but i accept it <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean for sure i don't judge it on anybody else yeah you, know, you do what you want to do with your body but i'm gonna do what i want to do with mine and i want to be hairless and wrinkle free for as long as mm -hmm. i can yep. <laughs> like yeah i see people who are like oh why doesn't she shave her armpits because you know like those natural people they don't shave at all yeah it's like let her do what she personally i don't like that because on me yeah, yeah. yeah on me same yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. on me or, I think that's the or, whole point or, yeah the my other, body my choice mm -hmm. right the other way around that i do get this 
why do you get Botox? Why do you get plastic surgery? That is the judgment that I receive. Right. Oh, oh like that you being, should be happy with what you have. Or don't Are you, you so love insecure? yourself? Yeah. 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 You're changing okay. yourself. Yeah. That's the other judgment I get from women a lot of the times. Of course. But I mean, what are I'm still living my happy, wrinkle free life. Yeah. Like it doesn't really stop. <laughs> yeah. Me. I can't frown right now. Yeah. Me either. <laughs> and I like it that way. Me too. And yeah. we're having a pleasant experience because yeah. I don't ever think you're mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's I what I got too because I got my boobs done 10 years ago you know before it was like I mean it was still pretty popular but now like plastic surgery you did before booming. was cool I was yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like one of those old school ones you guys wouldn't know but people are like oh you don't love your body why are you getting boobs why are you blah 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 like you clearly hate yourself yeah I'm like no I love myself so much that if this Me is too. the only vessel that I get for the rest of my life I'm gonna decorate it the way I want to yeah mm-hmm. exactly yeah. just like anything else like what's wearing makeup mm-hmm. makeup is just to enhance yeah, exactly. your appearance well, uh, Braces. toxic femininity also judges you for that well oh, also true. Judge. true I am naturally beautiful I don't know how you can wear all that makeup oh. Oh, but then Jeez. also the natural girls say that they get judged by people being like, "Why wear some makeup? Like, why don't?" Yeah, I mean, it just seems like we get judged ugly. anyway for You're being women. No matter what, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no matter what, exactly. There's always someone that's gonna say something. Yeah, but, but that's the other way I get it. I don't really the get body it. hair thing though. I did find myself. Um, I I don't personally. I don't like body hair, and I like to shave it all off. But um, I do remember like there was a time where I had the what's it called the landing strip pubes instead of like the shaved completely off and a boyfriend requested it to be shaved and I felt a little like weird about it Mm -hmm. but then after I did it I was like oh shit I actually love this so I personally love it and then um the armpit thing I did find myself stopping when I saw armpit hair like if I'm scrolling on Instagram and then I see someone with or when I, I first saw it it was startling to me and then I had to check myself and be like Wait, why am I why am I startled by that? It's because I'm so conditioned to see yeah, yeah. nothing there mm-hmm. when someone when a woman raises her hand to see nothing there. And it really made me think cuz this was like in my mid 20s and I I just had never seen someone so brazenly like before body hair and it changed my perspective completely because I thought this woman was like super confident and super gorgeous and yeah um, I just was yeah I was why I was like why am I so alarmed by that I think it's definitely those internalized beauty standards that we have because even if you told me like it's fine to leave your body hair like it is so internalized yeah I can't even fight it I won't let it grow yeah well, well, for just, me like, it's because I'm just uncomfortable with it yeah, like, and I just, I just don't, don't like feel it. Yeah. Good. Like it's prickly for me personally. I'm just like, no, I, I like it smooth. That's why mm-hmm. I laser. Yeah. But yeah, I, I do find too. myself too, like being kind of like startled or like taken aback a little bit when seeing something perfectly natural and normal. Yeah. And it's the freaking conditioning. <laughs> it's the conditioning. And also, I think it's like, yeah, your self judgments because when I was a kid, uh, all all my cousins got to shave their legs before me and my mom like wasn't gonna let me shave my legs till later and I had like the longest freaking leg hair and it was super embarrassing for me to go to the swimming pool and like all the other girls had like their shaved legs and I just hated it because I thought it made me look manly and I didn't want to look like a boy like when I was younger I just wanted I wanted to be like the cute popular girl like I was watching Clueless and you know it's like that era of like you want to be cute and stuff and I felt like a boy and then also I had extra hair above my lip, you know, just for, <laughs> I have like no arm hair, but I have like e- extra facial hair and extra yeah. <laughs> like leg hair. And I, why is that so cute that I just imagined you with like a little fuzz? <laughs> well, kids are making fun cute. of me for it. And I felt mm. like a man, like I felt like I looked like a man yeah. and I didn't yeah. like it and I was really embarrassed about it. So I think because I was so conscious about it. You uh, you like see it right That's away. So you know? true. Right. And I also, relate hard to that. Too. Yeah. Like I actually narrowed my upper lip in middle school. Same. And then it, I did you burn? It. I did. I yeah, burned it. And see? so I had like a little burn spot in the corner. Yeah. And then I go to school. I'm all fucking embarrassed. And people are like, is that a cold sore? I'm like, yeah. People thought yeah, it was hurting. Oh. Cold sore. What? <laughs> oh. I was like, yes, yes, it's a cold sore. I was I was re- I was ready to take a cold sore <laughs> over them. Knowing that I was trying to get rid of my mustache. That's so funny. Yeah, I was like, yep, it's a cold sore. I got a cold sore. (laughs) No, and then my mom, she didn't let me pluck my eyebrows. And my best friend at the time, she had like, she incepted me with it because she was like, you have a unibrow. That too. And she was like joking, like, 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 uh, what is it? 
poking fun at me and it was just like tiny little yeah, baby just hairs. tiny hairs but because of that i was fucking f- like oh my god i have a unibrow i'm frida call like oh my god yeah. i have to i have to like <gasps> oh pluck god. this oh and i'm trying so, to explain to this generation like the 90s everyone had razor thin yes, brows yes. like it was not cool to have thick brows nope. and i had such thick brows dude so i asked my mom if i could have tweezers she's like no tell me why i was so I was so determined <laughs> that I fucking plucked my eyebrows with my nails. Oh my wow. God. I plucked my eyebrows with my nails for many years because she wouldn't let me pluck. And also my legs. So you're talking about your legs. I wanted to shave <gasps> my legs too. You plucked Whoa. your leg hair? Yes. That's a lot. That's a Not lot. always. I, I did it once. What? But, with but your then, fingers? Yes. Wow. With my fingers. Wow. I literally plucked it because I'm like, I'm not being hairy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, you were like committed. I did. I, like I tried. I found a pair of tweezers and I tried one hair and I, it hurt so bad to me that that's I was like, you I'm, I'm weird. To be ugly. <laughs> Dude, that's what I'm telling you. I'm weird because I actually like the pain. But Dead. that is a psychological maybe thing. That I, I liked it. That's why I would pierce my own shit. Like my ears, my nose. Like I like I, I I can find pleasure in pain. That's yeah. why I'm like I'm looking forward to birth. <laughs> See what that's wow. like. You're insane. Maybe you're a looking, masochist. We're looking oh forward to hearing your birth story. Yeah. yeah. On Tiff and Kate. Like, oh, it was yeah. so painful. It was so good. <laughs> so not that not not that this kid hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> I got <laughs> up. No, because yeah, like even like I lasered my armpits, right? But yeah. being being pregnant because of the progesterone, like a lot of extra hormones, like I'm hairier now. Mm. Yeah. Like I have like thicker hair. So then even my lasered stuff, like I'm getting like little whiskers. I'll even pluck these out and I don't feel anything. Like it doesn't really hurt. I don't know. I'm weird. You're I crazy. told you I'm weird. Your, your skin's made me like numb from you just plucking shit Maybe. all the time. You're like, I felt so much emotional pain. This is nothing. <laughs> For real, dude. See? I yeah. really was. I'm psychological I really shit. Was. I'm actually kind of surprised. Like I didn't, I didn't take the step further and like, you know, like go and mm-hmm. like self harm. Mm-hmm. Like I, I didn't do that. But yeah, like, I don't know. I can like meditate or something and then find like be curious about the pain that's what happens i can be curious about what the pain feels like oh you would like yoga then yeah i do i love yoga because that was the hardest part for me was like like learning how to breathe through the pain and then like get flexible and open up you and i are such opposites i want to be put to sleep for everything me too (laughs) everything ever (laughs) sedate me i I don't want to feel any of that i understand the whole personal goal thing though because if it's like a goal and i'm like okay i've never done this and i've always thought i couldn't do it it's an experience i'm I'm an experienced person yeah Yeah. experienced person but (laughs) plucking out shit with your hands um no (laughs) no no i I draw the line (laughs) dude that's how i really gained a lot of confidence too knowing that i can that you could maybe do it it. i'm still like i don't know you're gonna be able to do it go ahead yeah no but because when i went in to go get that procedure done for isaac i was already in labor right and they asked me like what's your pain level right now from zero to ten and i was like i don't know like a 0.5 like a one and then the nurse stopped and she looked at me she's like you're having a really strong contraction right now like really and i'm like yeah i don't know i'm just it's what did fine. it feel like? Like cramps? Yeah, it feels like cramps, but like because your uterus is literally the whole belly, it just feels like a cramp around your whole belly. Uh, I'm going like to be tight. such a baby. I cannot handle that. <laughs> the more you fight pain, no. the more it hurts. That's true. So that's why I'm like, this bitch just is like embrace, it. embrace it. it. I'm like trying yeah. to just embrace it, breathe through it, just be curious about it. I don't wow. know. I, that's why I'm I'm really looking forward to birth. <laughs> like, I don't okay. want well, that's good. Perfect for you. Right? <laughs> oh man. I'm sure you guys have gone through this one. This is probably the one I relate to the most. Let's um, say. But the one that's like, okay, when women in workplaces from form clicks and cut out anyone they deem to be an outsider. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a joke going around TikTok right now saying that women who went to beauty school are the biggest bullies. Like like your bullies in high school either became a nurse or they went to bully or to a beauty That's school. That's so true. <laughs> <It's a> bully <laughs> school. Bully school. <laughs> <laughs> or they become a lawyer because my bully became a lawyer. Oh, <laughs> and I'm like Ooh, yeah, she had a lot of like yeah. aggression. My my bully went and became a nurse, and then this other girl that I knew that was terrible is also in beauty school. Oh my god! And that's that's like the stereotype now. <laughs> but they say that you know, like they form cliques and stuff. And if you're different than them, then they just fucking treat you like shit. Yeah, or yeah. they like whisper and then they like kind of laugh at you, but yeah. they can't. Dude, hear what they that's say. I went I went through that in like elementary and middle school when I first got here to America. Mm-hmm. But in high school and college, I didn't really go through that. And I was never a bully, so it's not like I was like that person, you know. But in 
elementary for sure i did go through it in middle school i went through it because i didn't know english but then like after that i mean now in my adulthood i guess i just don't have the space and the emotional capacity to tolerate those people so i yeah. just cut them out yeah literally yeah. I'm well, like, we have I the just, benefit of like we don't go to a workplace where we're forced true. to be there and like be That's around true, them. Right. yeah because i do feel like it's just like you uh like people just repeat the roles that they've always played so if that's who they were in high school then that's True. who they become in their their workplace they don't grow and get they better. don't grow You're yeah right. we don't go to we don't go to work you know yeah i yeah. wanted to ask you stacy because like you know we're both mexican yes. and i only grew up with mainly mexicans like in my family all that like vacation everything was just around mexican so that's my whole bubble that's my whole world i did know people from other ethnicities but in a predominantly mexican neighborhood right so for me i grew up thinking like damn mexican not, not all of them obviously but like a lot of mexican women are catty mm. and to like really gossipy mm. really like trying to pit other women against each other like I personally, in my opinion, feel like it's really ingrained in our culture because mm -hmm. that's what I grew up with. But do you agree with me? She's Mosa. So <laughs> I would say yes. And I hate to admit it because I personally I, don't too. think that I'm like that. Yeah. But for example, the city that I'm from, it's a small city. It's, um, so in Mochis, it's really small and there's a lot like the social class levels are very apparent over there. Mm -hmm. Like the difference between private and public school is oh, yeah. so huge. And so, for example, over there, there's like the country club and there's like you have to go to the one private school if you even want to have like the positive relationships to grow up and have a successful business, you know, because if you're the contractor who does drywall, everybody in the city goes to you. Mm -hmm. And if you're not popular if you're not in the right circles and nobody's going to give you business right mm -hmm. so yeah it does happen and like in elementary i went over there and that's the kind of social struggle that i had because like we were well enough to have money where i was going to pub private school but we weren't well enough so that i could have all the expensive things and that i was going on the expensive trips right so i was you i would say like the poorer of the well and uh, well off people um in my younger years so yeah i did that definitely like was a thing and even like when i went older and i went back i had like i went to a i was part of a bachelorette trip and i hadn't had a relationship with people from over there in a really long time and just seeing the the dynamic of like girls mm -hmm. in their 20s like mexican girls in their 20s like i was i went on this trip over there mm -hmm. i was just like oh my god this is crazy because here in america it's very much like say it to my face mm. In Mexico, it's like, oh my god, I don't like her. Can you yeah. believe her? Like she's wearing and then, that. Like, blah blah blah. Be, be fake as fuck in front yeah, of your face. Yeah, but in front of her, you're like, oh my god, girl, like you're so nice. Yeah. I love that you're here. That, that. That's that quality that I'm like. Mexican yeah. bitches have this. Yeah. Why are they like? Th why are we like this? Because I'm part of this group. But let me tell you. But what. I'm not like. <laughs> I think over over there, it's more about el que dirán. Like you care more about people, what they're gonna say about you. So you would never go yeah. up to somebody and be like, "I heard you were talking shit." Yeah. You would be like, "Can you believe that Tiff was saying this about me?" Mm -hmm. Or can you believe that Tiff did this? So over there, you try to save face as much as possible. So you would never go directly to somebody and tell them, "I need you to stop talking crap about my child." You would just pretend like you're okay with them to save face. Mm -hmm. in front of everybody else so yes God. i agree girls yeah. are terrifying yeah girls yeah. are wild okay we're gonna take another quick break listen to our sponsors they are wonderful people and wonderful companies and we highly suggest them whatever we're saying right now uh, as the world becomes increasingly uncomfortable we're all looking for as much comfort as we can get and the one thing i can always count on is how comfortable my purple mattress is uh, the purple mattress is a mattress unlike any I've ever seen before because they have like this purple grid thing on it as opposed to springs or memory foam like other mattresses. Uh, that's because purple is comfort reinvented. Only purple has the grid, a stretchy gel material that's amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, necks, and hips. I don't know how it does it, but it's, uh, it's pretty fantastic and it's my favorite color. Because of how it's designed, the grid does not trap air. Uh, air actually circulates and flows through it, so you'll never overheat. The grid bounces back as you move and shift, unlike memory foam, which remembers everything. That's why memory foam has craters and divots. And right now, you can try your purple mattress risk-free with free shippings and returns. Financing is also available. 
Purple really is comfort for an uncomfortable world. Right now, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. Go to purple.com slash bigmood10 and use the promo code bigmood10. That's purple.com slash bigmood10, promo code bigmood10 for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Again, that's purple.com slash bigmood10, promo code bigmood10. Terms apply. And now for a quick shout out to our sponsor, Nutrafol. Did you know that 30 million women are impacted by weakened or thinning hair? If you're among them, know you're not alone and that there is a solution you can trust to deliver results. That's where Nutrafol comes in. Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting the five root causes of thinning, which are stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, and metabolism. Nutrafol is physician formulated to be 100% drug free. They use medical-grade botanicals in consistently effective dosages so you get the most reliable results. Thousands of women have taken back control of their hair with Nutrafol, with many users raving that the supplement not only transformed their hair, but restored their confidence too. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code BIGMOOD to save $15 off your first month's subscription. This is their best offer anywhere and it is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com promo code big mood so wait to to finish off that point i would just say it's literally like a novella like it i is. think we grew up watching them so much that people oh. genuinely like to play them yeah. oh. and, and it's that's what it is i think that's what it is I one know. of the things and that's so like disappointing it is but i mean you gotta take the good with the bad right i still yeah. love being mexican i'll yeah, still same. S- i love it yeah I'll speak it till the end. Arriba los mochis. I will never stop saying it. So. Yeah. And then, I mean, obviously, like, that's just one tiny little perspective on the the culture or, like, the personalities. Because women, like, on the other end of it, they're, like, so loving, so warm, so inviting. Yeah. And, like, you know... Exactly what I was saying too. It's like be warm and be nice to your face. <laughs> they might talk to you in your back, but like at least yeah. I don't know. You just gotta accept them and take them for what they are. You know, because yeah. that's even sometimes in some of our families. You know and what's crazy though? I literally I have this one aunt who she's so blunt. She literally like she'll she'll go to my mom and she'll be like, "Oh, Marielena, like." You've gained so much weight. Oh, like, oh my gosh. So you're not on a diet? Like, she's like that. You look yeah. so healthy. That's how my Filipino That's nicer. aunts are. Yeah. And, oh, um, my grandma. But yeah. she does it like, are you having a baby or are you just gained weight? You know, like that kind oh, of thing. Oh, God. My aunt's like yeah. that, too. So, so then, like, that's... I guess kind of rare in, in our culture because no one's like no that, they'll like, be like oh my god you look so good we're so happy to see you and then when you leave uh, oh, she looked like she gained weight huh yeah, and yeah. then your mom will tell you oh, th- your tia said that you look like you gained weight and you're like yeah, what yeah. The f- <laughs> yeah. yeah. so that's I feel like happened to me in friend groups in like middle school and high and high school elementary all like all through that I felt like I never could form but didn't you go to private schools no oh you did public didn't? yeah and um oh you were poor mm. yeah Dead. yeah gross <laughs> Well, here, oh, it was actually <laughs> same. Here, not a lot of people usually go to private. Private, mm-hmm. yeah. I in know. Mexico, that's the thing, right? Because that's what I was thinking. Because maybe here, I not that I'm in those circles, but here maybe in private schools, there's more money. Like, mm-hmm. if you go to public school, it's probably we all ma- our parents all made around the same amount of money, so we were all like, yeah, the normal social class, mm-hmm. you know. And then maybe people in public school, I mean private schools, but that's I don't know. I, I, when I got to the U.S., I stopped experiencing that in high school and college. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but yeah. because I got better at cutting people off. Like if that's you notice, good. I'm just like you talk shit. Bye. So, so yeah. what happened I, for me? I made friends with people online in chat rooms, and then also like a lot of guy friends. So I mostly had guy friends in high school, and then after um, high school and college, and so. Um, and with all my boyfriends, it was like we were OK with uh, being friends with our exes and all that stuff until Steve and Steve had introduced this role of like, hey, we shouldn't be friends like be like friends, friends with opposite sex where you like stay up all night talking to someone yeah. single and stuff. And so this is where we were you had brought up about how you think that boys and girls can't be friends and 
um, I had my mind changed on that because I was on the other side where I had mostly guy friends. Mm -hmm. And then Steve brought up a lot of great points and it made me change my mind. How did you come to that? Because I know that's what a lot of people wanted to hear about. Like we've been teasing it for a couple episodes and I know Jess wanted to hear about it. So, okay, so this is definitely me. I'm on this the side with like my friends are all guys because yeah. like games like these are dudes that play games with every yes yeah, so all my interests were guy oriented like yeah. stand up comedy and sports and all that stuff yeah yeah so I think maybe we should start off by saying that this is obviously my only experience and I think it rings true in my life and everybody's different but I just genuinely don't comprehend what you could even ever have in common with a man and this is obviously me I'm in a relationship with a guy and a romantic relationship with a guy like what could I possibly talk to or talk about or like go out and do with a guy who's my friend when I have my partner Mm -hmm. you know like Mm -hmm. what what are you doing like even that point of like speaking on the phone with somebody till late at night Mm -hmm. Why would I ever allow Denny to have that close relationship with someone? Yeah. And for, I guess. For, or not allow, but uh, Yeah. Like it's not allow, but it's like, why do they want to yeah. spend that much time on the phone with someone instead of spending time in our relationship when time is so precious? And sorry to cut you off, but most affairs start emotionally. Yes, yeah. exactly. And but so I, I never really thought about any of that. And then he brought up a, a few points of just like, why would you want just like even that to be there. Like even yes. if you're neither of us are jealous or anything, but like even that to be a thought in your mind that I might like someone outside of our relationship is like something I would never want to happen or be encroached on. And then I started thinking about all my guy friends that I was friends with in high school and, and college and stuff. And um and I always thought like, oh guys and girls can definitely be friends and stuff. But then after in between relationships, yeah, they did try to make moves on me. Of like course. so so Steve was like, yeah, there's always someone whether it's you or them that you kind of start getting feelings if you're spending Steve. enough one-on-one time yeah. together. And I was like, "Huh, yeah, cuz it was never me gaining the feelings, mm-hmm. but they obviously were because after when I was single." So then this situation that we're specifically talking about is the girl is in a relationship and she and then being friends with a single guy. No, you could both be in a relationship. Either it's or. just a one-on-one. Like you're spending a lot of time with someone in the op- on the, of the opposite sex. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know if I if I fully agree. Like have like a hard, yeah, fuck no. Because I think it's circumstantial. It is circumstantial, with, especially with the type of relationships that you have. Because like I have always had good guy friends that are either in a relationship or they're not. And not that I would like go out of my way to like plan a date with them or anything. I mean, I, I guess maybe like I have had lunch dates with guy friends. That's not weird to you. Yeah. I mean, cause they're, they're not even like, I wouldn't, I wasn't even seeing them as like friends. They were like brothers. So that's family. That's the same thing with me also. Cause I have guy friends from I've known since high school. Right. And then like, once a year, once or well, I don't really see my friends period anyways, but once a year, once every two years, we go on like a, a dinner, like an expensive dinner. Like we were successful. We did this. Let's catch up. And that's it. Um, well, you're both single. No, oh. it's a guy yeah. and a girl or it's multiple guys and you. It's me and another guy. Mm. Yeah. And this yeah, is someone like, that I've had that too. Like, like we have matching tattoos, but then like we would never touch each other. Even when yeah. we were both single all the time, no one ever made moves, you mm-hmm. know? And well, it's the same thing with the guys that I play games with. Like I've been single or like I break up and no one ever makes moves with me because like if we ever did, we throw up. I could, I could totally see that. So I've been on both sides. Yeah. Um, it was more about like your part, the way your partner feels. And also, um, I think there are caveats. I will say like, for example, um, Steve has been on the phone late of hours with like Jess or you or mm-hmm. Gina or Tiff. Um, helping them through different advice like just getting they wanted a male's perspective on something Mm -hmm. and I totally didn't mind that at all because like we're all friends in a group like and it's not like like they're frequently talking on the phone it's just like hey I need advice on this thing and so it's and they're friends like I I don't think that they aren't friends you know just friends but I think for us and this is all based on everyone's personal relationship because like I said all my exes were like oh, we were both cool with 
talking to each other's exes. Um, but you know, personally, it's like a relationship is a set of rules that you and your partner agree on. Like it's yeah. not one person restricting the other person. Yeah. It's and just I, like, Hey, this, we both feel comfortable with this. And yeah. I think it's out of like consideration. Like you have to be considerate too, because even though I do have friends like that and I do go out, I clear it with my guy, not because yeah. he controls me, but it's more like, Hey, you know, this is who it is. Like you've met him before. And I would be like, is that okay? You know, and right. fine and with I, it. I think that's a thing, right? Cause then that becomes, for example, like my friends, when I got with my boyfriend, none of my girlfriends had to be like, can we still be friends? Yeah. Because yeah. there's nothing there. Right. Was would it, if it was a guy and let's say I had a really close relationship with the guy and then I got with Denny, Denny would probably be like, why? Mm -hmm. Like why? What's going on? Right. It would throw him off because it is somebody who could potentially threaten their relationship, even if you've been friends forever or, you know, like in this scenario. The fact is, when things get tough, are you going to go to that guy? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then is he going to be like, oh. And he's going to feel like he knows you better than your partner. Like that. Those are the things where it's like, OK, I can see where it crosses the line. Like this is these are yeah, the things that I can that agree Steve with that brought up was like, OK, so they are being an emotional support for yep. you. And mm -hmm. when you're like giving them intimate details of your life and like sharing vulnerable things like you would a partner, like a spouse, then when you and your partner have a fight, are you going to then go to that this guy yeah. for emotional support? And I was like, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I can totally see that. I will never go to my guy friends as like a intimate type of vulnerable, you know, mm -hmm. source of uh, support. I, I do. Like my group of guys that I hang out and play games with, I do because we are the same for each other. We're like each other's support system, mm -hmm. but it's never crossed the line. Yeah. Like, you know, do you want to come over and comfort me or whatever? Something like that. It's more like we talking video games online like if you and your boyfriend got in a fight mm -hmm. like would you go to that group of guys and yeah because about want, him yeah because i want a guy's perspective i'm not like every fight you know yeah but it's like i want a guy's perspective um and then i also go to the girls too so for me it's like an okay. equal kind like of thing yeah me too because yeah. i'm like i literally have done that yeah exactly. i literally have done with that Steve, in our group you know well, yeah that's what i'm saying that so my coffee i was like okay but it's like we're all a group of friends and mm -hmm. then someone yeah, needs help with something I agree. that's different to me yeah. than but, someone that's outside of our yeah. friendship group that you met before yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. because so, Oh, well, ahead. if let's say Nikki and Steve weren't together and Nikki wasn't here, I don't think you, w I don't know you guys' relationship that well, but I don't think you would go out of your way to call Steve if Steve was a single guy. Oh, if he, no. If he was just a single guy living in his apartment by himself mm -hmm. and you were having problems with Casey, you wouldn't be like, hey, Steve, single guy who lives no, by himself. No, it's also like, irrelevant because I'm like, you're single. You can't help me. Like, yeah. I, need, I need like a, right. a so husband's he, perspective. He's the <laughs> husband of one of your close friends. Yeah. So yeah. he's not just Steve. Like he's right. a close person in your life. You yeah. Know? And then if we're talking about like seeking um, the emotional whatever it was, that yeah, support. the term support, that's the word. If you're seeking emotional support. So I had this guy that back when I worked at the hospital, um, we used to carpool together sometimes cause his, he used to work at Best Buy and it was like down the street from my hospital. So there were times where we would carpool and I was single some of that time when we actually were carpooling and he had never made any moves. Like I would go to his house all the time because I was really close to his sister too. Mm -hmm. And so like that was, that's like a guy friend that comes to mind where I'm like, wait, like, we would never cross that line and he was there for me. I'd be there for him. Mm -hmm. I knew his whole family. He knew mine. Like, I don't like even like I would, uh, his sister would sometimes watch Isaac for me. Like we were more like family. Like it, it's not even like, a. It, we were really close, but I also wouldn't go to him for emotional support. Mm -hmm. Like not, it wasn't that like we wouldn't, we weren't that close. So that where point. is he now? Yeah. So just we just drifted like we don't yeah. really nothing really happened it's just like he lives his life and i live mine and, yeah. and if we so happen to keep in contact then that's fucking awesome and then you yeah. can meet casey because casey's never met him so yeah. but like <laughs> i think the difference here is like when i say friend i mean like a meaningful like a friendship. best friend yeah yeah, yeah. that you're like having a relationship you're talking with to, hanging out with all the time texting like, yeah yeah because yeah. there I have, i've had those friends too like i actually had one the one guy friend i had who didn't but um i we used to both do crossfit and we used to live in the same apartment complex we would drive together to the gym work out together and leave and never never did either of us ever hit on each other but that friendship or that acquaintance was based on 
that like mm-hmm. it's not like we were like talking about yeah like, i have right. these really deep feelings oh, about right. this and that you yeah. know so i think there's a difference between an acquaintance that kind of serves a purpose in your life mm-hmm. like giving you a ride or convenience or whatever and then a person who you're like this guy is so cool and i love him so much and we're best friends and we're hanging out together and he's and look, the we're at the mall right now and we're yeah. doing selfies at the mall yeah, like, yeah, yeah. i yeah. think yeah. that's maybe the level of friendship that we're not we hadn't thought about Mm -hmm. you know so is it possible that a guy and a girl out there are friends right now and they've never touched each other yes Mm -hmm. it is yeah Mm -hmm. and is it is that what i want for my relationship no Mm -hmm. i wouldn't i don't think that's something that we need i personally in my relationship like i have my group of girlfriends and he has his group of guy friends and i do think it's healthy for us to spend time away from each Mm -hmm. other doing our own thing and he goes and plays volleyball and i go hang out with the girls um but if there was another woman who he was like hey good morning michelle yeah and he's like what are you doing today oh i'm at work and you oh good morning that's like yeah i don't do that that's a friend exactly but that's a friend yeah so i think the definition of friendship is what people get heated about yeah because when we're talking about friends we're talking about like your friends like that friend like for example you said like he goes to his guy friends you go to your girlfriends i i go to i play poker every night with a group of guys it's just poker. I'm there to take their money. Like that's right. like, we, we, we chit chat and stuff. And like, we're like, you know, teasing each other and, and picking on each other. But like, it's all guys. There's maybe one other girl that pops in here and there, but it's usually like all guys, but that's, it's just my interest. Yeah. We don't, we don't text each other. Yeah. We don't talk to each other outside of poker. We just play poker together. And that's it. That's my time away yeah. from Steve. Um, but I literally don't have anyone in my life that I just, text I yeah same. you guys only our group same. chat yeah. and our group chat is like friends. inactive yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. we don't we're not My even sister. super active in our group chat either but you guys are the ones that I, I would go to for any little thing but it's not even like I it's not even every little thing yeah I go to Steve for every little thing and then yeah, and then any too. girl things that I'm like Steve couldn't answer this or he couldn't relate then I go to the group chat for because yeah. yeah. that's what your partner is right like that's that person that you chose to mm-hmm. share yeah. your life with so I mean yeah is it possible to have a guy friend yeah I'll call it a guy acquaintance you know men mm-hmm. are great and they're needed and they're <laughs> loving and <laughs> yeah like I don't hate men I, I'm in love with one you know Right. So, um, it's just that as great as they are, I don't have a lot in common with them for friendship grounds. I think it's fun hanging out in a group. Like, yeah, it, you know, they're like, fun. I love joking around like guys t- tend to in general have a little bit of a different sense of humor than women. I feel like I I. Uh, like meld with that better because it's a lot, a lot of roasting and a lot yeah. of like you know teasing each other but like busting balls I like to bust balls that that makes me feel good and that's like but a lot of women don't like that and I, I found out the hard way <laughs> because I really didn't mean to insult people and I was just thought we were like oh this is me showing you that you're a better you're one of my close friends yeah. you know and uh and they didn't like it so it's fun for me in a group setting to like talk to guys or hang out with them, joke with them, but that's it. That's where it ends. Like there's no outside texting. There's no like, yeah. So I guess that makes sense too, because my guy friends, it's not like I hit them up every day. Like, Hey, what are you doing? Let's hang out with them all. Yeah. So it's more like, let's go shopping. Like let's play games. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. That's like your job and what you enjoy to do. But when you have your partner, I'm sure you're like, babe, this is how my day was. I'm at work or I'm going to play or stream or, you know, what you do. I will always talk to my significant other more, obviously, because that is my best friend. Mm -hmm. Um, so that makes sense. Yeah. I have my friends in their settings and like when we do go out to eat, um, may, sometimes it's one-on-one or whatever, but most of the time it's in a group. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I think that's healthy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, I didn't even think about that until I started dating Steve and I got converted. Yeah. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. It's just the healthiest thing to do. And I feel like leave no room for doubt. Yeah. I want you to be, I want you to know I'm all about you and there's no one else that could ever disrespect and anything that I have to give, I will give to you exactly. emotionally and obviously physically too. Mm-hmm. And if there's like a reason that you're talking outside of the relationship, it's like, Oh, it's for this specific yeah. reason. Yeah. Or, like, or, yeah. Oh, I just wanted to confide in her about blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah. why not confide in me? <laughs> your therapist. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I'm trying to think about it too. Like the other way around, like, cause for me, like obviously number one is my partner's comfort, comfort, comfortability. comfortability. Comfort level. Yeah. That, easier to say that um yeah that's all obviously number one so then i'm thinking like well if it's the other way around would i be bothered if he had like a really close 
girlfriends that wasn't in our group that wasn't in our group yeah. that i didn't know mm -hmm. no i wouldn't like oh. i wouldn't be comfortable with oh. with her, him being close to someone that is not close to me yeah oh. right that's my a friend of that's, the group. that's right. my i think that's my boundary that's my boundary mm -hmm. i have to be close to her too yeah mm -hmm. and i have to know her and i have to be involved in her life and yeah and, i agree with and, that and, yeah yeah know who she is like yeah who like is i this need person? to know who you are yeah. that's why like whenever there are guys in my life which i don't think there has been outside guys from our relationship because all of my guy friends were his guy friends first yeah but if there were to be a like that guy i just talked about like if he would enter my life again like i would make sure for fucking sure that first of all casey's comfortable with him coming into my life number two that casey gets to know him and is close to him and has a relationship with him because mm -hmm. then I wouldn't feel comfortable. Yeah. yeah. I make it a point to introduce them and like have them hang out and stuff. So, you know, yeah. who is who. Yeah, exactly. I love when everyone's in relationships because then all the guys could hang out and all the girls. Could hang out. That's, <laughs> that's fun. fun. <laughs> but anyway, that we have. There's a lot more in the in the toxic femininity stuff um, that we didn't get to. But a lot of it is you get the gist, right? It's like women judging other women for not womaning. Right. And if there's something that we didn't get to, let, let us know in the comments if you've ever felt any sort of toxic femininity, because it's something that's not discussed as much as toxic masculinity which is like basically a lot of men are saying like you're just bashing us for being men mm -hmm. and it's like well i think that women uh have been pretty fair in the bashing actually so <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone so <laughs> get over in the comments what you think and also check out our sponsors and check out stacy's all of her stuff she's got a youtube channel she's got a jewelry line she's got an instagram and she just got engaged Yay! so congrats to her Thank and you. uh subscribe and we'll see you next week Bye. Bye. Bye, Apple Jules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>